Okay, I think we can get started. So as uh, many of you may have noticed, we have a, a number of talks at the interface between physics and mathematics in this uh, conference. And uh, this is one of them. Um, so uh, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Piotr Turkin, uh, who will tell us uh, about the tropical limit of string theory and Feynman integrals. Uh, over to you, Piotr. Okay. So the, the people in the audience can ask questions uh, by just speaking up. You'll be able to hear them. And the online participants, um, please either type the question in the chat box and uh, you know, we'll attend to it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to, and, and thanks to big thanks to you and all the organizers for uh, uh, giving me a chance to speak in this in this conference. Um, about a subject uh, that I worked on a while ago, and I still kind of think about uh, every now and then. So it was great to uh, um, back again, think about these things. And um, yeah, thanks. So so as as uh, as you said, this is going to be a talks at the interference, and I'm afraid at the intersection. And I'm afraid that I am a physicist, so the intersection is going to be from a physicist point of view. Although I try to make it um as 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 math friendly as possible uh we'll see how that how that goes so uh yeah this is mostly based on some paper i i wrote uh, uh a while ago now called tropical amplitudes so here's a short outline i'll i'll, I'll start with a uh, rather lengthy introduction with some motivations and uh, some physics background so this is going to be mostly pictures I'll flash briefly some results so that you can uh, refocus at this point, maybe if you got uh, distracted. Uh, then I'll, I'll spend a great deal of time describing this tropical or field theory limits of uh, string theory. Uh, just to set things from the start, this tropical limit is just the limit for string theory, it's just the limit in which strings uh, become particles. So as I've explained, string has some strings have some length, uh, ls string length, and when this length ls goes to zero, uh, the strings becomes point-like, and this is then particles. I'll give some different pictures. There, there's a variety of of ways in which this can be seen. This is uh, some process which has been known since the early days of string theory. The the the, the reason why tropical geometry was need, needed for me when I was doing that is um to do some precision calculation at higher orders but it also probably gives a nice conceptual framework in which to think about this limit more globally in a way that maybe hopefully will become clear later and then i'll, I'll mention a few open um open questions and, and research directions at the end of course please stop me at any time if you have if you have uh, questions i'll do my best to answer okay so uh, this is going to be about. Is it too big, or like if I zoom out, is it is it good like that? It's uh, it's good for me. Uh, okay, folks okay. at the back of the room, can is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, 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 so. I'll stick to this for a minute. Thanks. So um, yes. So um, so this is going to be about scattering amplitudes. You've heard you've heard a bit uh, about it in uh, in Aki's talk. And then you'll you'll hear about it in, in Lada's talk uh, also, I suppose. Uh, scattering amplitudes are some physical quantities in, in quantum mechanics that describe the the, prob the probability that some given set of incoming particles or wave packets scatter do in interact together in some complicated manner and uh, give rise to some amount of outgoing particles. And um, the scattering amplitude A is some complex number uh, as a function that takes as an input mm, mostly the, the momenta, the, the momenta of these incoming and outgoing particles and uh, gives you a complex number. And the modulus square of that complex number is connected to the probability for this process of happening. So I'm gonna be talking about those curly A everywhere. Um, and uh, the, the arguments of the function, the momenta are going to be not essential. So I'll just, uh, I'll just most of the time use some kind of ellipsis to refer to it. So in, 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 in quantum field theory, uh, tweak coupling, we have a systematic 
so just just for the physicist. Um, in quantum field theory, we have kind of a schematic procedure to compute scattering amplitudes. It's it's based on the perturbative expansion on a kind of uh, Taylor expansion, and uh, each of these terms in this expansion we compute via Feynman, di Feynman diagrams. So a pictorial example in in some uh, in some simple theory that Naki talked about, phi cube theory. Uh, if you don't remember what that is, just uh, it's not, not important anyway. I'm just showing some pictures, and and now we're spe we specialize to two incoming and two outgoing particles, so four particles in total. Uh, here is kind of the only time I mentioned the arguments. So it's this four momenta for the particles one, two, which could be think of the incoming one, and uh, three, four, which could be thought of the outgoing one. And here you have some one, two, three, four everywhere. So, so your scattering amplitude is kind of this infinite series of terms of diagrams which organize themselves by some loop by number of loops that the graphs make and you should think of into each individual process as kind of a splitting and joining interaction so here two particles come in and fuse together into a third that eventually uh, decays into again two other particles and with these basic rules of splitting and joining you can build more complicated graphs where you have loops and so on. And uh, it happens so also that these guys are weighted by some uh, some some number, uh, which is small for this to make sense, 0 0.1, for instance, or 0 0.01, whatever, g. And each of those things come with a parameter g to the number of loops. So overall, you're, you're, you're your amplitude is kind of a loop expand is given by this loop expansion and every single one of these little diagrams which is made of splitting and joining and so on uh, are called Feynman diagrams and uh, Feynman rules give a way to assess which are like straight quantum filtery one-on-one type things give a way to associate integrals to each topology so here i'm just flashing a complicated formula for you to have seen these things essentially for a given graph g with E internal edges, that's the number of total number of internal edges. Um, you have some projective or some, some integral, sorry, some integral to perform over E real numbers, uh, which usually come in some kind of, uh, their sum is kind of restricted to one, which is this GL1 uh, operation here. And then you have a rational function that you need to integrate, a rational or um, sometimes with square roots, depending on the, the dimension you're in. D is, uh, what is big D here? Yeah, this is small, small D and big D are connected to the number of space-time dimensions and to the number of particles as well. And, and these, uh, these guys, U and F, are polynomials in the alphas. And whatever is there are external data of your problem and they, they relate to the momenta of the particles. So these are uh, uh, numbers and the thing you're integrating are these alphas. So this, this is as precise I'm gonna be on Feynman integrals in this talk. You're integrating over this, these parameters. And uh, there's a whole industry in physics of people computing these things and developing some nice uh, number theoretic approach to it. Uh, Francis Brown is a mathematician doing that, for instance, thinking about this, for instance. So, okay, and, and I'm gonna try to argue that this, I'm gonna try to explain to you or just uh, maybe give a, give a feeling that these alphas can actually be thought of as, um, as, as, as the parameters of some tropical, as the metric parameters of some tropical graphs um, later on. Okay, any, any questions on Feynman integrals? Yeah, there's a question. What is R13 there? You, you, you had this 13 in the first. Page. Sorry, yeah, this is just uh, that we're in space. We, this is our space time. We have three, three space dimension, one time direction. So it means we are in signature minus plus plus plus. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's all. So we have a pairing between momenta pi uh, and, and pj. Uh, we have a scalar product, which is, uh, you know, just with this, met with this metric with this uh, signature. 
some with non-positive definite metric. Okay. It's 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 no big deal. The the, the important point is that uh, yeah, it, it, this is just special relati special relativity. Uh, overall, all you care about are the, are are these scalar products, which you can consider to be some uh, uh, god given real numbers. I'm gonna call these guys SIJ later on. The signature are some signs. The signatures, the, that signature, that's some signs which between I mean on the on the product of the product between P and PJ or. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's minus p minus the first component of uh, you know p i zero p j zero plus p i one p j one plus p i two p j two and so on. Okay. But please don't get sidetracked by this. Just think of these scalar products as being some real num some numbers s i j. It won't really matter what are if these guys are positive or negative here. We're just talking rather abstractly. In, in, in real life, it does matter uh, because these integrals give rise to branch cuts and the variety of other complicated uh, analy analytic, uh, the, the analytic structure of these objects is rather complicated. So you really have to you have this under control and you really need to know where you are in the branches and so on. Uh, but for here, just think of these guys as, 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 uh, as, real, as real numbers, formal real numbers. Okay, so a few remarks, a few more remarks on this. Uh, the first one is that I wrote this as if it was a, an actual series expansion, convergent series expansion. It's it's not, it's never, almost never. Uh, it's always an asymptotic series. Oops. It's always an asymptotic series, uh, but somehow for physical processes to very high orders that we see in LHC, for instance, um, this, this works extremely well. So you can go to the fifth order and obtain some very accurate results. Um, and at some point, the series stop converging. So you need to do some more complicated resummation techniques and so on. But uh, for any practical purposes, it, it will work for the particle physics we can do today in colliders. Uh, this has some rather intricate combinatorial complexity. At each loop order, you have all of these topologies and different topologies of graphs you need to, to figure out and sum over and integrate and so on. And also, each individual graph can be very hard to compute at higher orders. I'm not claiming that tropical geometry can really help you with all of these, but it might just maybe in some longer term uh, provide some maybe nicer, maybe global perspective on these things, N namely essentially on how these different graphs assemble together in some bigger space. So now let me go to string scattering amplitude. So uh, and before before that. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm just going to, for the sake of time, I'm just going to skip this uh, and, and go to string scattering amplitude by, by generalizing what we did for particles, which hopefully you accepted. We had these little interactions for particles, not for strings. Uh, we also have splitting and joining interactions. And uh, when the string join, uh, they, they kind of form They form a bigger string, and overall, if you merge, if you look at the trajectory of these th strings in space-time, they draw a little pair of pants. Uh, diagram, and you have the same operation in reverse, where a string goes to two other strings, which also do another pair of pant-type diagrams. And with these pair of pants diagram, you can, for instance, attach them together to obtain a four string interaction where two strings come and two strings go to infinity. And, uh, and, and then you can also start to add more complicated things if, they, if the strings um, oops, sp split up once again in the middle, you'll have, you'll figure out easily that you have a handle, a surface, a, a, a Riemann surface, which kind of now looks like um, um, a torus in the middle, uh, the, and and in the end, this um, this yes. So this little table here was meant to explain you exactly what I did, so I can erase it again. Um, and so we end up with these things, which are string diagrams, which um, a string a given string diagram is is um, an integral 
Am I not saying this later on? Yeah, I'm saying this later on. So these string diagrams are, are kind of integrals over rim over the moduli space of, of uh, over over the deformations of these Riemann surfaces. It's a bit different from the Feynman diagrams, which are sums of these different things. Now a given at at a given loop order. A string diagram is given by an integral. So given loop order G, little G here. Uh, sorry, I call G the, the, Jesus, I'm sorry. I call G the expansion parameter later on. Uh, I cannot change the, norm. I'm, I'm gonna switch normal, no, switch conventions. And now G is going to be the genius most of the time, the loop order, the thing I called L before. So uh, because it's everywhere, I can't change it now, I'm sorry. So at some given loop order G, all right, this, uh, your string diagram is one single diagram and it's given by an integral over the moduli space of, of Riemann surfaces of genus G with N marked points. So where are the marked points? I didn't uh, draw them in the slide before, I draw this pair of pens. Well, the thing is that you gotta think of the string that's coming from infinity and at infinity, uh, I'm, I'm going to be very schematic. You're going to have to accept that. I'm sorry. But at infinity, they correspond to some, uh, th this little disk here uh, shrinks to zero size, roughly. And eventually, this is um, this type of, of configurations that we're looking at, at. So this would be for two to two string scattering at one loop. I've just motivated the geometry of this problem by some uh, some words and drawings. Um, this is in it. This makes no sense as long as I don't tell you what you are integrating over this moduli space. And I'm not going to tell you that either because, well, the thing is, we cannot really. Um, I mean, we have. We cannot claim that we know how to compute this object for all genus in string theory. There is, in theory, there is a procedure. But uh, we haven't really been able to uh, to make sense of it yet, and this is because I'm talking about the the only case which is well defined, which is the case of superstrings. So this is an aparte. I'm going to come back to only at the very end of the talk. So for these so-called superstrings, which are the ones we know how to make sense of physically and 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 everything, um, you need to. Witten has explained in a series of papers about 10 years ago as well. Um, Witten has explained how the, the actual formalism you need is based on super Riemann surfaces, uh, which I'm not going to say anything about, super Riemann surfaces. And then um, Ashok Sen has uh, connected this formalism of super Riemann surfaces to another formalism, which is closer to this type of, uh, of things. But overall, no one has managed so far to compute anything beyond uh, two loops. So two loops have been computed, but three and higher. In theory, we know how to write down the objects that uh, would give rise to this. But then to go from this initial object to the actual thing you can integrate, requires some some machinery which is not available yet. So let's just consider this as a toy model for two reasons. Um, so firstly, this is this would be a good, it would be okay for bosonic string, so-called bosonic string. Um, and second, they this guy contains some basic, some basic skeletal structure that would be also produced by the superstrings, although they would produce more extra things. So somehow this is a good, a good, um, uh, a good, let me call it a skeleton. It's believed that whatever the superstring will add is not going to change the basic structure that I'm going to describe. It's just going to dress up things in a more uh, physical way. But the, the basic process by which, in particular, you recover these U and F polynomials of the Feynman graphs, uh, this one should be essentially unchanged. So, so this is going to be our working assumption, this, this form. 
of, of string amplitudes as integrals over the moduli space with some measure, uh, 3g minus 3 plus n dimensional measure for the complex structure and complex structure moduli and the location of the punctures on the surface, and some abstract function, which is going to be a bit more precise in a minute. So, and, and then the string, the full string scattering amplitude is, is then a genius expansion. You sum over not all these complicated topo all, all these complicated topologies, but just one topology at each time, at each step, and you have this integral to perform. But it's the same integral. You, I mean, you also have integrals to perform to compute these feminine graphs. So overall, you seem to gain in in in, um, in combinatorial complexity at this point. And the idea would be to try to use this simplicity. Um, and how to use this and, and use this simplicity in this filter in limits where strings become particle. And maybe this would simplify the Feynman diagrams. So you'll generally always be integrating over MGN and not MGN bar, right? Or is it? Yeah, well, uh, OK, stuff happens. The, the interesting stuff happens exactly at MGN bar, at the boundary oh, of MGN. Yeah, that's right. It's at the boundary of MGN that this fan, that these graphs they generate into tropical graphs or yeah. Feynman graphs. And this is where the interesting thing happens. Actually, some stuff, some stuff also happen in the interior. But um, uh, I'll describe this to you. Try to express this integral as a sum um, uh, involving those boundaries. Somehow, this that's what you get to probably. No, at this point, they're not sums involving the boundaries. This is just um, uh, this is just one big integral. And uh, when you take then this limit where this length of the string goes to zero. It will decompose into one big integral over uh, MGN trop, the tropical moduli space of graphs, um, of essentially the same object, except now it's going to be a little, yeah, it's going to have a little trop here, and the statement which maybe comes, yeah, okay. Uh, since you're asking me, so uh, this is the object when you take this filtery limit, so. Um, um, and we physicists usually talk in terms of a, a quantity which is alpha prime, which is the length of the string squared. In any case, this thing goes to zero. So this big integral, which now I've specialized a little bit more, my f g n that I had before is now some kind of w polynomial and some q polynomial. I'm giving them their, I'm giving them names because this guy we know exactly how to compute, and that's the essential point. Um, they they then descend to some uh, tropical version, and uh, this the, the 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 crucial result is that this gives you exactly this f and u polynomials of the feminine graphs, uh, which uh, was shown maybe in some uh, different language also by uh, our colleagues here. Um, so. Yeah, and then this big integral over m chop, you can, if you want, think of it as an integral over each different graphs and their moduli. But what I'm trying to say is that maybe there is some interest in as seeing this as a big integral over one identified space, characterized space, rather than some sum of Feynman graphs, which you don't really know what they have to do with each other. At least this gives you a single quantity, which you're told to integrate over a space later on. Then the space is, of course, made of different chambers and cells. And if you want to split this big integral into a sum, you can. But maybe there is an advantage in thinking of it this way. Hmm. Any, OK. So uh, OK, so like, like, this is just more, more drawings to illustrate uh, this, this idea that the filtery limit, so alpha prime goes to 0. Prime is again this quantity. Uh, you you want to think of these um, big big graphs that becomes thin tubes and eventually uh, lines. Uh, so the same kind of would happens for higher genus graphs. Um, that's what you're trying to 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 identify. You you know that when you send the length of the string to zero, this is what should happen, and then this is what you're trying to identify to see in these big integrals. And uh, you could. This is similar to um, the process by which amoebas um, 
shrink to, to, to tropical varieties when you send uh, the, this, this parameter that defines the, the width of the amoeba to, to zero or infinity, depending on your convention. Um, is okay, it literally, so that, uh, can I ask a question? Yes. So is it literally the same thing, uh, like taking the string length to zero, is it, is it uh, the same? Is it just similar or is it like really the same thing as this amoeba shrinking? To... Uh, well, the thing is, um, you know, we, we never really, I think it's exactly the same thing. The, the, the thing is we never really parameterize, um, we always parameterize the, this string diagrams in terms of the moduli of the Riemann surface rather than an explicit realization of the Riemann surface. So you never really have an amoeba, but um, overall it's really the same, the same idea. An amoeba is some kind of uh, projection of a complex curve, and 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 then you shrink it, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's really the same um, uh, heuristic idea. Then in terms of string graphs, we we look at the moduli of these graphs of these Riemann surfaces, and how these moduli uh, essentially lose their angular dependence to become just uh, line-like moduli. Uh, but um, yeah, no. Otherwise, it's it's pretty much the same thing. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Okay, so this I just uh, described to you what what it what it means, and that and then the statement is of course sorry I forgot to say it. That the statement is that this object is the uh, field theory amplitude at G and N. This curly A. Okay, and on these, in this, in the, on this queue, um, on this queue, and on the measure, you can identify the first and second polynomial. So, roughly from Q, you will get the the, 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 the f polynomial, and from the determinant, there's a period matrix that for the graph that come in here. I, I don't want to enter the details, but that would give you this u polynomial. This d mu will will have built in this u polynomial. So um, yeah, the, originally the reason for me to work on this, as I said at the beginning, was a practical uh, goal. There was some amplitude that two loops in string theory that no one knew how to uh, uh, really um, uh, make sense of, and I could only go, I could only achieve partial results on this. Uh, so uh, this is still kind of an open question to some extent, for a reason that I'll mention later. Uh, but this has allowed since then to to do some some stuff at uh, some some so this allowed me to do some other things at two loops um, at four points and then some people uh, computed some things at five points and you can also now you we also now have some kind of conjectures for three loop objects which you can uh, use this technology for. So it was kind of a, of technological nature. Right? You need to you have this big complicated integral, and you need, you need to extract some limits. The limit doesn't commute. You need to do the you know all you, quite a, quite a complicated things. And so that was uh, technological, but maybe also since uh, you guys here are uh, mathematicians, uh, maybe there is a conceptual uh, uh, advantage of thing, seeing things this way, and um, this hasn't been found yet. Uh, apart from the aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing uh, fact that you encompass all these things together as a single integral over of a single function, uh, yeah. So just a, a quick question. So do yeah. I understand correctly that this f g n that you integrate in this to compute the string amplitude? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you said in higher uh, loop that it's not one cannot rigorously write this down. Uh, yeah. Is it true for the, the f drop gn is completely? Yeah. So for f drop, I mean, okay. No. Thing is, it did. Okay. What what is true is that this qgn, this qgn part, you can always write down, and it's it's from string theory and field theory. It's clear it needs to be there, and it's clear why. So the reason why I said you you get the correct skeleton is because you get these two first and second polynomials, semantic polynomials, right. And then your Feynman integrals have not only this, they, where are they? 
you're also free uh, Jim, where are my small okay you're also free to add here some polynomials in the alphas alpha e and this polynomial would be this w part wgn and this guy is the one that actually tell you the kinematic content of your third you you cannot as as a mathematical object your Feynman graphs are well defined with only the q this q part but if you want to know exactly the difference between a graviton and a gluon or, or a photon or whatever, Higgs boson, uh, you need to know exactly what is this WGN. And this is the thing that's hard to compute. Uh, but you can, you can do everything without it, without thinking about it. And you will still have the same correct framework in which uh, string, string graphs degenerate to Feynman graphs. You just don't know exactly what theory you have here. Uh, or actually, if you remove it, you know that you have some kind of toy model theory, like phi cube type theory. In general, string theory would give you not phi cube, it would give you gravitons or some stuff like this. And this guy is hard to compute. Does that make it a bit more clear? Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the question. Okay, so... This is about it for the physics intro. We're halfway and there is, okay, I'll see how, how what I can say. Um, oops, sorry. Okay, so now let me say a bit more precise things about this tropical limit of string theory and maybe tropical graphs themselves. So, um, um, of course I mean, um, is in the process of giving this, uh, this lecture introducing tropical geometry, but I won't really refer to that aspect of it so much, more like to, not to the explicit realization of the varieties, but more like abstract tropical varieties. So there's, there's many definitions for what would be tropical 1D varieties, abstract as metric graphs, algebraic curves over tropical numbers, and also limit, limits of uh, complex curves. And there is this nice, um, sentence that I took from uh, some, some paper of uh, E. Eitenberg and, and Grisha Michalkin, uh, which, in which they qualify tropical geometry as a way to forget about the phases of complex numbers. So I guess this, this kind of slogan was for, was tailored for, for physicists maybe, but the idea is that what are phases in string theory? So here I have drawn in a suggestive way this two two to two inter two part, two strings to two strings interaction. Um, and and along each of those tubular portions, you can identify some kind of longitudinal propagation of the string and the angular dependence of the string. And all the, the angular dependence of the string allows for because I, I didn't tell you what's a, what a string is. A, a string is just a system that can that can vibrate. It has vibration modes, a fundamental string. It's a quantum system, quantum, quantum fundamental string is this thing that can vibrate, so it has excitations. Um, the first excitation of the first state of the string is no excitation, no vibration, and this is just particles because if they don't vibrate, you cannot know that they are extended. It's only when they start to vibrate that they have uh, their truly stringy excitations, and um, it turns out that the, the masses that this correspond to, to this vibration, vibrational mode, have inverse powers of this parameter alpha prime, which is the one we take going to zero. So the masses of the stringy mode, they're very heavy in, in the limit, where um, they're very heavy. And because of uh, you know, E equals MC squared and so on, you're, you need a lot of energy to, to create them. So when you send this little parameter alpha prime to zero, the energy is to, to create and to excite this this mode becomes so so uh, so high that you can you cannot you can never do it and everything becomes non-vibrating, everything becomes like a particle. And I'm saying that the mass is zero, and you maybe wonder that you know electrons have mass. Um, we're talking about the difference between the mass of the electron and the mass the Planck mass, and this is like twenty orders of magnitude away from one another. So it's a good approximation to think that electrons are massless. In this in this model, 
Um, okay, so uh, and and I, I drew this uh, because yeah, if you if you simply map this object, this Riemann surface to the sphere by kind of an exponential to the plane, sorry, by an exponential map, you really see that this angular uh, quantity is really the phase of uh, the coordinates that parameterize your Riemann surface. So uh, this is how, this is one way to quickly get to, this is something I, I tell uh, my physicist colleagues. Um, so you forget the phase, you forget the vibrations of the string and you, you end up with particles. That, that's, it. that's what happens in some very crude way. Uh, this is some slide that I have for physicist. I won't refer to it now. Okay, uh, if there is no, Question, I'll just give a few definitions on tropical graphs. Any questions at the moment? Okay, so. There don't seem to be any at the moment. Okay, okay, thanks, I'll, I'll go on then. So I'm just uh, taking definitions from, from these papers. Uh, an, an abstract uh, tropical graph is a weighted metric graph. So uh, metric means that uh, the, the inner edges have a length and uh, weighted means that the vertices can have a weight. And uh, also there is a st stability condition. You work with uh, graphs that enjoy that enjoy this property, 2g minus 2 plus n is bigger than 1. It's the same property for stable Riemann surfaces. Uh, g, is, and I didn't define what is g and what is n. So um, g actually comes here. So this thing should be said somewhere later. Get about stability. Um, before getting there, there is a special specialization map which contracts, contracts edges. So if you take one graph with vertices W1 and W2 and you contract this edge, you obtain uh, the graph, you know, which you, you glue these two things together and you send the weights. And if you contract some inner edge, the, the, the weight of the vertex increases by one. And in this way, if you define the genus of a graph to be the number of loops plus the sum of the weights, uh, some weights can be zero, of course, uh, the, the positive number, zero, one, two, and so on. Uh, this, this definition is, is, is easy to check that um, it's stable under specialization. And uh, now the stability condition can be said, I defined everything. N is the number of external edges, external legs of your graph. Um, so. And so, yeah, some, some examples. So, uh, well, this, uh, this would be a tropical graph of genus two, which is a completely admissible one. Um, this would be a tropical graph of genus two with four external particles. Sorry, four external legs. I'm not talking particles yet. This is also a tropical graph with um, four external legs and genus two, except that now you also know that these, these edges have length T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7. Did I forget something? No. Okay. Uh, and these external edges, edges do not have length. Um, I can add, and I can add another leg, and now I have five external n equal five in this uh, in this language, and now I also have an, ex an extra modulus here t eight. Uh, so yeah, in this way, you should you should be able to see that. Uh, you can deform continuously these graphs in all possible ways. Uh, you can contract things. You can do uh, all of these uh, type of operations. Sorry. And and somehow what I'm going to introduce next, which uh, this author called the, the NGN trap. Oops the moduli space of tropical grass at genus G and endpoints is just the space which results from doing all of those manipulations, modulo the automorphism, modulo some symmetry factors, automorphisms of uh, discrete automorphisms of a given graph G.
that would define a modularized, a modularized space according to uh, um, uh, these authors. So to define it, let me try to mimic their, their definitions. You need to start from the modular space of a graph. So a given graph gamma with mod E internal edges, um, no, its modular space is simply the cone of all of its length. Um, yeah, each length has is in R plus, and uh, you mod this out by the automorphism group. And, and then MG entropy is, is the union of all of these things. This is as, as far as I can understand on this. You can show that this thing has dimension almost everywhere, uh, 3G minus 3 plus N, almost everywhere, because um, of course, this guy doesn't have any modulus. While this has 3g minus 3 plus n, where g equal 2 and n equal 4. But these are kind of measure 0. That's, that's what this statement means. Um, yeah, and in view of time, let me just mention these two examples. So this would be n04 drop. It's this uh, space here. And along each of these branch, the, um, the topology of the graph. So yeah, this is maybe not a good drawing. Let me, let me just redo it. So that's my N04 chop. And along this edge, you should think that you have three legs which are fixed, leg like one, two, three. Um, leg four would be here. and X would be the internal length here. And this would be the location on R plus. Then, then you, if you move, you go here, you will have this, this, this plot, two, one, one, two, three, with four somewhere here, and the same here. Two, one, three, but now four is, is here. And this is how you get this, these three different topologies of, uh, of graphs. And at the center, where it's contracted, you get this uh, this interaction, this contact interaction, which may have seen in, in uh, QCD, for instance. Uh, okay. Let me now also say that there is another one which is very simple to describe. It's M11 drop. So M11 is the modular space of uh, uh, graphs like this. They have one external leg and one internal edge, edge, which have some length t. And so it's R plus. And at the origin of R plus, you have the, the thing where this loop contracts to zero size, the vertex with one, and that's it. So M11 drop is just this uh, this model, this this uh, real line, R plus, positive real line. There's, there's a property that uh, zero and drop is a tropical orbifold itself. I'm not, I'm not really, I never really make use of that, but um, this, this was, this is a statement that was made. Uh, okay. This example on Agenius 2, I already described. And now are there questions on, on that? I was a bit, uh, I don't know, at the same time fat and at the same time vague. So uh, if you have questions. Yeah, I think there's a question. Yeah. Uh, hi. So, um, is this uh, tropicalization of this moduli space uh, involves? Uh, I'm literally, you know, uh, I mean, I'm applying the tropicalization procedure on these uh, smooth uh, complex curves and uh, getting the tropical graphs of them. Is that correct? Yes. You based you on the that definition that you gave. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I was gonna describe now, actually. But um, yeah, maybe I should just um, be be quick on this. So, or or uh, just just re explain actually what you said. Uh, so yes, so um, now just two two words briefly on on how to 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 obtain this by tropicalizing the the, the ordinary MGN. 
So you have MGN bar, which is the compactification, the Lin Monfort compactification, which contains all of these nodal curves where things are completely degenerated with these nodal points. Um, and that degeneration induce some kind of strat stratification structure on the moduli space. Mm, maybe one comment here because it's important. When when a big surface sigma sigma g, which is the union of uh, the sigma one and sigma two, with this node that is this this thin neck, which is going to become a node. Um, so locally near this neck, the surface is defined by some uh, equation of this form, x, y equals q, where x and y are on each side of the, of the node, of the neck. And this parameter q is a local coordinate in, in, uh, in MGN bar around that local curve, that nodal curve, I'm sorry. And um, the, 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 if you parameterize q in, in this way, e to the minus t plus i theta, q goes to zero, which is the node, is corresponds to some t goes to infinity limit in this coordinates. And t goes to infinity is the tube becoming very long and very thin. And uh, this is exactly the situation that uh, strings propagate, that strings become particles that propagate on some very long distance. So what I'm saying is that, yes, exactly, when you pinch these Riemann surfaces, you obtain graphs with long edge with long um, edges, as, as you know. So this is just to repeat that. This this part is just to repeat that. There is this notion of dual graphs. So dual graph you define by each node you associate a, a, an edge, and each component which is not degenerated, you reduce to a vertex of the genus corresponding to the uh, a, a vertex with a weight corresponding to the genus of the surface. And this would be the stratification structure of M20. You have this Riemann surfaces with two handle, then you can pinch them in, in, in so many different ways. And that corresponds to all of these graphs. So here in this graph, you almost have tropical graphs, except tropical graphs, you would be you would be stopping just before you would be stopping just before q equals zero. You would be stopping at q very small but not q equals zero. q equals zero corresponds to, to these dual graphs and the, the length are infinite here. You want that the length, uh, you want that the length are finite and this length are the parameter alpha e. Um, I would have liked to, to demonstrate this, but I am uh, growing aware that due to lack of time, I won't be able to really explain this in some more details, but this is just to convey the idea. The, this length of these graphs, which you have before you reach the exact nodal point, are up to some rescaling by one over alpha prime and so on, trivial rescaling. They are exactly these parameters alpha e, which you have in the Feynman integrals. Um, and so, yes, then heuristically, um, MGN is kind of like the union of small of neighborhoods along these nodal not all these boundary divisors, which are parameterized by graphs G. And uh, the complement of that is just some uh, interior of the moduli space, which I here simply call this. I'm aware that um, I'm not exactly sure how to make, uh, how to define this in some rigorous manner, uh, but I just want to, this is, this is at least how it's realized in the stringy in the string theory examples you can work with you really have this decomposition and you can work with it explicitly. In general, I wouldn't really know where to start to write some, to write down some, such an expression rigorously, but uh, yeah. And in each of these local neighborhoods, you can then do a tropical change of variables, which will take you from q equals e to the uh, minus t to some uh, q equals oh, well uh, sorry. So um, the, the tropical change of variable would be to would be defined in this way where t is fixed and alpha prime is going to zero, some small given number. Um, and in that way, all these integrals you have over dt would become integral over dt from some uh, 
inferior boundary to um, to infinity. Inferior boundary that depends on L on alpha prime. Um, just to flash the, the the idea. Hopefully, okay. Maybe maybe that thing was a bit confused, but that's the idea. On each of these neighborhoods, you can scale your local coordinates Q that parameterize your degenerations in this way, and then these T are these L's that I I keep on switching between T and L. Um, this this old things are become your alpha E's. This is what I mentioned, what I referred to by this uh, alpha primary scanning. Okay. Any any question or? All right. If, if not, I'll, I'll I'll just try try and move on a bit. Hi. So so yeah. so I want to ask: uh, Is there a top tropical uh, description of this boundary strata that you mentioned? Yeah, it's a. Uh, Kind of like, kind of like the same, I would say, because because you in the tropical world, I guess you stop right before the node, so you're still somehow in the in the complex world, except that you've forgotten half. You 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 degenerated your complex structure to one half of it. Here, T, it's a complex. It's a um, complex parameter. Okay. Q is a complex parameter. So when I do this, I actually mean that. And when alpha prime goes to zero, the thing that dominates is this parameter. And um, all the d theta integrals, it's a dt d theta. And the d theta integrals can just be done trivially. So uh, heuristically, I would say it's the, it's the same stratification structure. Yeah, I was wondering because, um, for example, if you take genus zero, uh, you uh, cannot allow uh, yeah. the, the graphs which ha which has less than three valences, right? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. So you have uh, yeah you have the same stability condition. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Ex exactly. It's the same in the tropical world and in the in the moduli space to have stable curves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there are the analogs of the. I'm just gonna be pretty fast now. Uh, I there. have a question. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the previous slide, uh, you wrote small t. Uh, yeah, small t is equal to uh, t by alpha prime. So how do we choose alpha prime here? Yeah, alpha prime is given to you. It's the parameter. Your 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 string integral g n. They depend on these parameters, uh, the p's that I mentioned, and they depend on alpha prime. So it's it's given to you. It's in the exponential. I'm gonna. It's it's essentially some integral of. So over the moduli, the t's, and so on. Uh, there is an alpha prime in the exponential. And then some some function which is uh, Green's function on the surface. So alpha prime is sitting here from the start. And the thing is that when you do this change of the specific change of variable, in a sense, there's always the combination alpha primes times t that appears everywhere. And it's natural to then consider, instead of a dt integral, it's natural to consider a dt over alpha prime. Sorry, these are complex integrals. It's t. Yeah. Um, it's, it's considered to do this change of variable, and then everywhere appears only t, wherever there was alpha prime t, of course, plus i alpha prime theta. I wrote, yeah. Um, and here you can see that there's a few ways to see it. You can either integrate out d, d, d theta because of what I said before. And anyway, the, the, what remains is a parameter without alpha prime. And in field theory, you don't want alpha prime anymore because nothing depends on alpha prime. Nothing depends on the string length. So when you do this magical change of variable, your expression simplifies to the field theory expression plus other alpha prime quantities. So this is this is telling you that um, this is the way to, to, to drop alpha prime. I'll, I'll have a specific example a bit below. Uh, to make this more more precise, maybe more uh, more concrete. So, just one word: you have the analog of uh, abelian differentials 
on your graphs and they're just functions uh, forms which are one on a given cycle and zero anywhere else i'm just flashing this i won't talk about this really in details um <clears throat> okay i told you that the, the crucial part was this element was this object qgn because it's the one we know how to write down and how is it written it's written as Uh, in string theory, this would be written as a sum over the usual Green's function on the surface. And the statement is that in the tropical limits, this becomes the sum over the Green's function on the tropical graphs, which we know how to write down explicitly. And uh, the, it involves in particular this, this tropical prime, fo prime form I'm going to come to the analog in, in Riemann surfaces in a second. And some complicated uh, function of the omegas, which whose role is just to make this thing single value. This E, the, the whole point of, um, of this paper I wrote was essentially to, to show that the stringy E descends to something which is simple, which is just the graph distance between two points in the tropical limits. And this is also, to some extent, what this is also what uh, Omid and, and friends shown in, in their paper using Arakel of geometry. Um, but I, I had to use a trick. Uh, and um, it would be nice to have some, some better understanding of, of this limit exactly. So uh, let's see how to wrap up. Give me a second to, to see what to do. OK, I want to talk about this prime form. So I, I, let's look at the expression in string theory. <clears throat> so it's given by some integrals over the complex structure moduli, which are now called tau. I'm going to call them t to, for to be more, to have a better notation. Uh, the locations of the puncture of the puncture marked points on that uh, Riemann on a given Riemann surface at genus G, this function W, which I don't want to compute. And then this exponential. Here the SIJs are these numbers I was telling you about before. They're not exactly random. SII is zero, and the sum of all the SIJs over I smaller than J is also zero. You need these two properties crucially. And then this, this Green's function has an explicit realization in terms of this object, the prime form and that complicated mess, which is here just to account to make this whole thing single valued. So the prime form, which is what I want to talk about, uh, it's also called the Schottky Klein prime form. There's a nice uh, description of this in, in Fe, 72. It's essentially an object that vanishes on the diagonal and only there. And uh, it's a section, it's not exactly single valued, it's a section of some holomorphic bundle with weights minus a half, minus a half in each, minus a half, minus a half in each variable. So, more precisely, if you transport x along an A cycle, uh, it doesn't change. And if you transport x along a B cycle, it picks up some phase. And there is an explicit realization of this E in terms of, again, due to phi, I guess in terms of theta functions and some more complicated piece of more some and some uh some 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 square root differentials some, some differentials of uh, weight one half again which create this weight i was talking about before and uh so the theta functions there they have an explicit expression in terms of uh, the moduli of the surface which you encompass together in this period matrix and uh the zeta here is is that the, the argument. Uh, and uh, the, the whole difficulty was to, to take this tropical limit of this object. And the diff why, why, why it was difficult for me is that here, the, everything is defined in terms of a, of a, um, a theta characteristics, uh, delta, and, and the expression of these theta functions depend heavily on, on, on delta. But there is a remarkable statement that defined in this way, the whole dependence on delta drops out. And when you take the filtery limit, this de degeneration limits of this object, multi-degeneration limit, it's really hard to see actually that 
it's independent of delta. Um, and you, you really need that for some reason that I don't have time to explain. Um, so I could use a trick and delta, you can kind of relate to some edges in the tropical graph you descend to. And then you can always choose a delta, which is the favorable case where you can show you descend to the distance. But the problem is that you need for having the full picture of the string theory limit, you, you don't need just the, the first order term. You also need some other Q corrections, where Q is again this exponential of this my, of this uh, moduli, and this uh, older Q corrections. It's really hard to show they don't depend on delta, and you end up with a very complicated expression in the end, which uh, could never make sense of. So um, that's one thing that's missing in this business. It's not really to do with tropical geometry. It's to do with these degenerations of um, abelian differentials and theta functions at higher genus. But this is one thing you you would really need to make complete sense of all the all the expressions we have in the literature right now to be able to extract their tropical limits. Um, and I am reaching the hour, so. Um, I could conclude with just a three, a three minute simple example of what happens uh, at, at tree level, if that's, if that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Okay, so and just to show this tropical scaling thing where it comes from. So this would be a four point uh, string theory amplitude. So this graph sphere with four mark marked points, it's an integral over the four punctures, and you have this exponential. And note, I'm not putting any W here. I'm just having this Q thing. Um, the, 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 um, the Green's function on the sphere is just a simple logarithm of the absolute value. Actually, you don't really have four integrals or yeah, four complex integrals. You have just one because you have some global conformal invariance in the sphere, which allows you to fix four points. To, for instance, uh, usual gauge, usual choice zero, one, and infinity. The last point is not fixed, and it's z. This z integral that is left over, and this log of stuff to a times s simply becomes this uh, oops, these type of um, of factors. Minus two here is a bit of magic, but. Uh, it would be the equivalent of having added a W here. It doesn't really change the, 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 the idea. So of course, when you look at this integral, you actually can compute it immediately. It's the Euler beta function. It's, it's fine. There is, no, uh, there is nothing to do here, really. But let's try to be more uh, pedestrian and take literally try to ask the question, how can I take alpha prime go to 0 in this integral, and what do I get? So the claim is that. Uh, you have four different domains in the complex plane for Z. Okay, you have small neighborhoods around 0, 1, and infinity. Three disks, D1, D2, and D3. And you have the complements, D, uh, and T. So in each of these small neighborhoods, you have these D to Z integrals to perform. And let's look first at uh, neighborhood around 0. Uh, if you do this change of variable, z is exponential minus x over alpha prime plus i theta, um, this guy here simplifies immediately, right? You see that the alpha prime s and the exponential minus x over alpha prime, the alpha prime just cancel out. Boom, boom. So you remain with just uh, x times s. I will just remove this integral, this delta from the alpha primes. Um, of course, you have a global one over alpha prime here, but if if I had correctly normalized everything, I would have had some powers of alpha prime in front, uh, which in the end makes everything a happy ending. Um, so I'm working locally around zero. Now, what happens for this guy? Well, actually, nothing happens because here the limit is just continuous. It's fine. You can just take literally take the limit. Alpha primes, alpha prime goes to zero. This just goes to one. It doesn't have any singularity, no nothing. 
the integral at this point, the limit commutes and you can just take it inside. And overall, you can integrate the, you can integrate all the theta, you get two pi and uh, you get just this simple integral, which would be one over this parameter S. Sorry, I switched, I switched from Sijs to these two variables S and T. And that, that would be one, one Feynman graph. You could do the same for the other Feynman, for the other graphs and you would have uh, other T and, and combination of S plus T. Remember that you have actually three independent guys. They sum up to zero by something I flashed really fast. So this would be minus U. And this is really the form uh, that uh, you were uh, promised with. And this can be put back in the form of an integral over the tropical moduli space, where now G, G drop IJ is minus one half times the distance. And with these simple rules, uh, you can work out that you are really, that this definition really gives you that sum here for the, for, the, for the limit. The distance between two and four is zero, they're on the same edge. The distance between one and four is just the internal edge. And I've marked in, in fact, these three main edges, which is a, is a reminiscence of the fact that in the, in the, on the sphere, you could fix three points. Uh, and that generalizes easily at n points. So you really have integrals over n zero n drop. Then I had, I'm, I'm gonna stop here. I had, uh, there is another thing to describe where these vertices with weight come from. They, there's a nice story that they relate to um, uh, the problem of QV divergences in field theory and you really need these guys and in string theory it's well located where this, they come from. Uh, but I, I won't uh, talk about that. And yeah, in general, okay, whatever. Let me, let me conclude. So with a few, just, just briefly a few open questions. So I, I told you that the actual thing we know how to do is, is super string theory. And um, that is well formalized. And th there is a big formalism of super Riemann, so-called super Riemann surfaces or super manifolds. Uh, Witten has a nice set of notes on this. You can, um, you can look at it if you, wanna, if you wanna learn what that is. Um, um, so this suggests that if you take the tropical limit of these objects, you should, there should exist some kind of super tropical geometry. So I know that there is a word super tropical geometry somewhere in literature. It's not the same, it's not at all the same construction. Super is used in a different sense, more matzy, uh, some matzy sense, which I, I don't really know what that is. So that's something that has not been done and would be interesting to do. I, I did mention that uh, you need to compute this, some higher order terms in Q in this, uh, I didn't tell you why, but you, you need to do it to have the full theory limit of some amplitudes. This is also an open question. There is this thing which I was quite vague and schematic about, about this global structure of the moduli space. How does it exactly descend to tropical moduli space? I think it would be good maybe to have, have this in there and better understanding if, it, if it's not already there or if it's not completely trivial. Um, and then, yes, is it useful to have to represent Feynman amplitudes as integrals of some tropical object over tropical moduli space? Is this some kind of tropical period of some sort? Uh, that's completely open. That would be kind of a grand idea that uh, maybe you can classify these functions or classify the classify the periods of these functions or something like this. And okay, sorry, I'm uh, sorry for going over time. I'll stop here. Thanks for your attention. Questions or comments? Alok has a question or comment. Hi, Peter. Hi. So Hi. One, one question I had was that the, as you know, in CHY, I mean, we can take the alpha prime going to infinity, infinity limit also, and then we get the, uh, you huh. know, the field theory amplitude and there we don't tropicalize, right? The model. So is there a, huh. is there an understanding why you know, both these opposite limits, but where you don't tropicalize uh, the model. Yeah, it's a very long, uh, yeah, thank, thanks, uh, all a great, great question. It's a very long story. There are two, um, kind of two things. Firstly, so you, you know about the ambitious to string, I suppose. 
so the MB twister strings, the MB twister string reproduces CHY. Um, sorry for the non-experts, I cannot explain any of these words. Um, so it reproduces CHY, but there is something that's a hope that you can do a different, a different gauge choice for your uh, Beltrami differential with French gauge fixing on the MB twister string wall sheet such that now the Beltrami differential um, do not correspond to scattering equations, but correspond to Feynman graphs. So there is a hope that you can actually do this by different gauge fixing. Um, and then there is another part of the story, which is that actually alpha prime was never really there from the start in the MB twister string. So whether it is zero, one or infinity doesn't really make any sense. Um, while it does for string theory because it represents the mass of the higher spin states in the ambitious string, there are none of these. So when you take alpha prime equals uh, one, uh, you get some very complicated integrals, which you don't really know how to do. But if you could, you would get the field theory answer. So um, it's just nice that in the ambitious string, you can take alpha prime to infinity, you localize on the scattering equations, and you don't get any of the higher spin mass because it's not there. In string theory, if you localize on the scattering equation, of course, you have all of this higher spin stuff and uh, the theory becomes uh, free, non-interacting. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to, to talk about this in, in private if, if you want uh, something I've thought about. Other questions or comments? Um, AV team, please enable the online participants to unmute. And in the meanwhile, uh, you can raise your hand or type your question in the chat box if you're online. Uh, I had a question uh, slash comment. So uh, do you know if anybody has thought about, uh, so this is re regarding the question about uh, super strings mm -hmm. and the super tropical curves. Uh, it, it would seem like, you know, this uh, Berkovich analytic geometry would be a natural setting in which to talk about super objects. Uh, do you know if anybody has tried or is there? Um, so, sorry, I should have. Been, so, firstly, Witten has kind of described the bump. So, he, he kind of calls FRAC MGN uh, his supermodular space. He has described the boundary structure. He has described the compactification structure of it. So, there is kind of an understanding of how these super Riemann surfaces degenerate. Um, it's, uh, it's abstract, it's in, in terms of the moduli. Um, I, and to answer your question, no, I don't know. And, and it would be great to, uh, to, to use um, Berkovich geometry to, to make some progress uh, on, on that uh, question. Yeah, but I, I'm not aware of any, uh, yeah, I'm not aware of any work in that direction. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, there's one here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to understand. Uh, so, I mean, what sort of advantage do you get by tropicalizing that uh, string amplitude integral? I mean, does it sort of, uh, you, I mean, is it like uh, a dimensional reduction to the space of integration or some, you essentially, the problem becomes combinatorial, something like that? Uh, yeah, so there are two advantages. Uh, two two reasons why. So the first advantage is, is practical, is is practical. The thing is, in 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 field theory, there is this proliferation of graphs, and it's hard to really recombine them together or even compute these graphs individually. There are some cases where it's simpler, and people have computed the whole thing in string theory, and not in field theory. Um, Actually, no, they're not this case. This, this, this was true back in the days. No, it's not true anymore. But it, it used to be that there were these cases where you there, there were these things in string theory that were computed, but not computed in field theory. So there was a practical reason, which was to compute this. There is this uh, stringy stuff. And when you can compute this tropical W, you would get the field theory scattering amplitude for free. Uh, because you had this and you didn't know that. So that's one, one reason, one practical advantage. Okay. Um, in some cases, it's simpler to compute string theory stuff than field theory, and then you can take the limits. Uh, 
uh, yes. Uh, and then there was, if there is a conceptual advantage, um, that is still an open question. Uh, to 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 repackaging everything to uh, into a single big integral over Feynman graphs rather than a sum of different separate Feynman graphs. There for for the experts there is there is some advantage for um, uh, for the KLT uh, and the double copy program because it gives you. Uh, it gives you a, a unified definition of an integrand in field theory with usually when you compare two graphs there is no there is no way to distinguish between uh, there, there's no way to connect the loop momentum of one graph to the loop momentum of another but within this framework because everything is the same integrand you can just really connect things continuously and you need that for what what our friends uh uh, from California and other called uh, the, the labeling program and in the, in the thing to technology to compute gravity amplitude. And um, there is an advantage, maybe conceptual and practical at, at this point. It gives you a single object and you can then work with the single object. Uh, in terms of having periods of tropical forms, that is unknown. Yeah, and uh, I have one more question. So in this limit, uh, essentially the interpretation is that you are Essentially, is it is it similar to taking a low energy limit uh, of okay. the amplitudes? Or I'm sorry, I should have mentioned the word low energy. Yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah. It, it's just that people use low energy for different type of things sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's it's essentially taking alpha prime and goes to zero. So you work at lower energies than the strength scale. It's the low energy limit. It's the filtery limit and it's the tropical limit. It's one and the same um, thing in this in this context. All right. Thank you. I should have I should have dropped the, the word low energy limit at the beginning. I'm sorry. Just want to scroll back to credits and the questions or comments. Uh, I had one question. So, oh sorry, maybe I wait till you. Finish. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Then. So uh, there's this other story about uh, scattering amplitudes in QFTs, which you know Pinaki talked about, where yeah. you have polytopes and they determine the S matrix. Um, I guess it's a very, this is a bit of a vague question, but is there a, a way to go? I mean, here also you have some combinatorial flavor to, the, you know, the way you package amplitudes. Is there some way to um, go between the two and could it suggest a way to think about string amplitudes? Yeah, it would, I'm not sure I have anything specific to say on that, but it would be, it would be nice. Yes, there is a, yeah, no, I, I it feels like uh, things should be, uh, yeah. Connected, but I'm not sure exactly uh, okay. how. Yeah, sorry, I can't say anything. I, I don't know what, what specific to say, but it's a good good point. Yeah, it would it would be nice. Any other questions, comments, the online participants. Okay, if if not, let's thank Piotr again for a nice talk. Okay. Thanks. Thanks again.